Okay, so in this video, what I'm going to do is actually show you how to set up the uh, environment on your Mac to be able to use the Java and the Java commands in your terminal. So the first thing you need to make sure of uh, if you want to start using uh, either of these commands is to actually have Java installed on your system. So the first thing I want to go ahead and look at is this link that I have right here. So if you go into Google, you can do just a quick search for NetBeans and Java 8. This allows you to get both the NetBeans IDE as well as the Java 8 um, or Java version 8. So the reason I'm going to recommend Java 8, uh, one of the reasons is because of the fact that there's just this convenient link to get Java 8 with, uh, with NetBeans. Uh, the other reason that I would recommend it is because of the fact that if you want to be able to uh, kind of play around with the JavaFX library, uh, Java 8 is going to be the latest version of Java that still has JavaFX uh, as part of the initial download. For later versions of Java, you would have to get JavaFX as its own separate module, so you'd have to go through the process of actually installing that and downloading that separately, and it's a, a bit of a pain, so to kind of uh, alleviate that problem, we're just going to go ahead and get this version. So when you type this in, this very first link that you're going to see for Oracle, it's going to show JDK uh, 8 update 111 with NetBeans 8.2. So if you click on that, it'll take you to this page on Oracle. And from there, you can just uh, choose the appropriate version. Uh, make sure that you accept the license agreement for it. And then just kind of follow the directions for the installer to get it installed and set up on your machine. Uh, once you've done that, then you will have the Java library uh, somewhere on your machine. So the next thing we need to do is make sure we know where to find it. So we'll come over to right here. So I have my Finder on my Mac open right now. And what I'm going to do is navigate to the hard drive for it. So I'm going to go to this Go tab right here and select Go to Folder. From there, I'm going to put just the um, this forward slash. I'm going to click Go, and that's going to take me to my Macintosh HD. From there, as long as you follow the default path to install Java, you're going to go into this library folder right here, and inside of there, you'll find Java. So if we go ahead and open that up, take a look at it. Uh, so there's two things here. We've got extensions and Java virtual machines. Uh, so these are going to be your JVMs. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open this folder, and inside of here I've got a couple of different versions. Uh, as far as update 111 goes, I don't have that specific one on my machine. Instead, I've got a few others, uh, specifically for Java 8. Uh, when you look at this, you're going to see something like JDK 1.8. That's referring to Java 8. In my case, I've got updates 161 and 171. So I'm going to go with the latest update that I have, which is this 171 right here. So if I open this, it's then going to have a contents folder, and then inside of there, there's a home, macOS, and this plist file. So the home is going to be the one that I'm the most interested in, since inside of here, we're going to find things like our bin, the JRE, our lib, and then also, uh, to make a note of this, we've got that JavaFX zip folder right here. So this shows us that JavaFX is actually something that is directly included with Java 8. Okay, so the primary thing that I'm going to be interested in when I want to actually get my environment set up properly is going to be the location of this home folder since this is where the bin and the lib are and those two folders are kind of essential when you're trying to use these um, Java and Java commands from the terminal. Okay, So now that we've seen all of that I'm going to go ahead and close this and come over to my terminal. So right now I've got it to the desktop so I'm just going to go ahead and navigate to the um, to that HD folder that we looked at first. So we move to there. We'll do a quick ls to see everything that's in here. Um, we want to make sure that we can actually find the library right there. So we're going to go ahead and navigate into that library. If we double check here, this is where we're going to find the Java folder, which is right here. So then we'll go ahead and navigate into that. We we'll go ahead and clear this to free up some space. From here, we're looking at these Java virtual machines. So I'm going to do CDJ and then hit tab 
to finish the rest of that out. Go to that. From here, look again, we have the different versions to pick from. So we're gonna be interested in, uh, in your case, if you followed that download link, you're gonna be looking at JDK uh, 1.8.0 underscore 111.jdk. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna be doing 171 instead. So I'm gonna to navigate to that. So I'm gonna do JDK 1.8, hit tab. Uh, if you do enough of this, uh, probably just a J, if this is, it's the only one that you have, uh, that'll just fill out the entire single folder that you'll have in here. Uh, in my case, it's gonna fill out enough to get to this point right here. So I'm just gonna add the seven to distinguish between these. Hit tab again and just fill out the rest of that. So I'll navigate into that folder. From here, we just have the contents. So we'll go ahead and navigate into that. We know the next one's gonna be home. So we're gonna do that one. And then once we're in the home, uh, we can double check, make sure that we've got all the things we're looking for here, the bin, GRE, the lib. And then what we're gonna do is go ahead and grab the current path that we're on and then copy that to the clipboard. And in order to do that, if you wanna go ahead and take a look at this command, I've got this little link open up right here. And right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this command that we have right here which includes both PWD, this gets the path, or the current path, or this pipeline character, so we're gonna pipeline these, basically means we're gonna execute both of them simultaneously, and then we have this PB copy, which is basically just a way to uh, copy the result of the last command, and then put that into the clipboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this command right here. I'll come over to my terminal, I'll paste it in right there, push enter, so we're not gonna see anything occurring right here, but the path to this uh, home folder has been copied to the clipboard. Okay, and then once we've done that, we can go ahead and clear, and then we're gonna navigate back to the home folder. So we'll move to that, and then inside of this home folder, we're gonna check for a particular folder that we're looking for. So we're gonna do ls-a, and the reason we're gonna do dash a so we can see all of these additional dot files that are included. So the primary one that we're gonna be looking for is going to be this folder right here, this bash profile. So inside of that bash profile, we wanna be able to add a little bit of, uh, a, a couple of lines of essentially scripting code that will help to set the path for our Mac. Okay, so in order to access that, what I'm gonna do is open that up in the text editor for my Mac. So I'm gonna use the open command and then do dash E. This will open uh, whatever file that I specify in text edit. And then we're gonna do the bash profile. So do dot bash underscore profile. Okay. So that's gonna go ahead and open up the bash profile and text edit. And then what you're gonna look for is a particular point somewhere in your, uh, inside of this bash profile to start inserting uh, these lines right here. So somewhere around here, preferably before you reach, uh, you should have a line that says I'm gonna load the shell dot files. So just before you reach that point, that's where you wanna go ahead and insert this. So we're gonna use this pound symbol right here. Uh, this basically means that everything on this line is just a comment, so it doesn't really affect the, uh, the bash profile. It's just there for your sake, so you can keep track of what this means. Uh, everything that comes after that will be lines that are actually being uh, executed. So the first thing we're gonna have is a variable that we call Java home in all caps. This is gonna be equal to, and then we're gonna have this pair of double quotes. And inside of the pair of double quotes is where you're gonna paste in the thing that we just got. So if I go ahead and delete this, and I do control V, I can actually see that the path to the home, I went ahead and copied that to my clipboard, and now it's available for me to paste it right here. Okay. The next thing we'll go ahead and do is export that variable so that we can now access it. And then we're gonna go ahead and grab our path. We're gonna say this is equal to, and again, we have that pair of double quotes, and you're gonna do this dollar sign and this pair of curly braces and put in Java home. This is basically a way of being able to insert a variable into uh, this string, the stuff that's got double quotes around it. You'll then have this colon operator and you'll specify the path again. So. The reason you're gonna do this portion right here is to make sure that whenever we are putting Java home into the path, we wanna make sure that we still keep what was currently in the path. So we're kind of just uh, appending that back. 
Uh, if you forget to include this part, what's going to happen is that it's basically going to erase everything that's in your path except for the Java home and you definitely don't want it to do that. Okay, so once you've done all of this, make sure that you're uh, keeping everything in the path, adding Java home, and then you can just go ahead and export the path, and then you will save your bash profile, and go ahead and close it, and then we'll go ahead and uh, close the uh, terminal as well. So we're gonna just go ahead and clear it so you can see this. I'm gonna use this exit command, and then I'm gonna use command Q to close that and then I'm gonna go ahead and reopen it from Spotlight so I go back to my terminal so you can reopen that go ahead and maximize this make that a little bit larger and then from here I'm gonna to navigate to my desktop and once I'm there I've got this test file that I had open from the very beginning and this is gonna be a Java file that I saved on my desktop Go ahead and double check to make sure that it is in fact right there. And so then you can go ahead and test the uh, Java compiler. So I'm going to do Javic, do test.java. And if that works properly, it doesn't uh, give you any error saying that it doesn't recognize Javic, then this is working the way that we expect it to. Uh, then the next thing we, we can test is the Java command to make sure that we can actually run it. Uh, double checking. The thing that we want to run is going to be this class file that we just created when we compiled our Java file. And so we're going to do Java. And then the only thing we need here is just going to be the name of the file. You do not need to specify the extension. That's just going to be assumed by default. So it's just going to take this uh, whichever file, uh, whichever uh, class file I can see with the name test. So it's going to be looking for this file. And we'll just go ahead and do that. And then we can see the output that hello world printing to the terminal.